Mm-hmm. Now, mm-hmm. you mentioned this is the highlight uh, getting into the drama that I think is relevant. Mm-hmm. You and me and everyone else figured a way to get with somebody and dating people. And like, I met my wonderful wife when we were in high school. I know, <laughs> I know. But you point out something that's really going on here. Scientology, you said, is hunting for a girl. I mean, they find him flowers, they bring him food, they pamper him and everything, but they're hunting for him a girlfriend. Can yeah. you tell me what, what is going on here? Yeah. Well, after Nicole turned out to be like wrong for Scientology, she wasn't she wasn't obedient. She wasn't wanting more. She she was she, she they decided she Tom needs a Scientology girlfriend. Right. But one that we can control and tame. So Vanity Fair, Top Magazine, put out the whole story. So Scientology put out a, an absolute lie to the prettiest girls in Scientology to make a short video to say, guess what? You might be in the next Tom Cruise movie. So we need a little audition on video to get your features, to get your demeanor, to get your mood and your manner. So send us a five minute clip of yourself. So the 30 prettiest girls in Scientology all submitted videos. And then Scientology sealed members who signed a billion year contract, which Scientology says is religious spiritual vows were actually a dating service working for Tom's sexual partner by viewing the videos and choosing the top 10 to send to Tom. Mm-hmm. Or how is any of this religious? This is looking for Tom's uh, next sexual partner. Right, right. I mean, I'll be honest with you, though. A lot of cults, I imagine, would do something like this because they know how powerful sex is for humans. I mean, we all need it at some point in our lives, it seems. It's very rare that people don't. And my point is, especially since they've seen these already active, what better than to find the perfect Scientology girl to keep him stuck in? That is cult 101. Find a girl who believes like you. I got a friend who just divorced his wife. Um, she's an atheist. He was an atheist, but he became a Muslim and literally divorced his atheist wife that he had three or four kids with to be with someone that matches his faith. Mm-hmm. So it tells you like they're thinking psychology here, even though they're against psychology. Or, you yeah. Know, it's the same. <laughs> yeah. 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 And, and you see these pictures of Sun Young Moon marrying 2,000 women with <laughs> these bulk, <laughs> bulk marriages all done. You, you've seen it, right? Yeah, they have tons. They have even met each other previously. Right. And these Korean women are matched up with these. There's Korean- a guy named Lord Rael is another cult guy who started a movement. You imagine Joseph Smith, you know, the, there's these celestial marriages, which probably were consummated at times, probably maybe not at others, who knows? But um, yeah, it's a big sign of cults. If there's sex involved, yeah. usually there's something going on. But sign of cults to interfere and embed themselves in your marital sexual life. In Scientology, when you marry, there are three people in the marriage. You, your spouse, and Scientology. Mm. Scientology is an absolute bed partner, demanding and accepting knowledge reports of what your spouse says as pillow talk. Certain things I told my former husband, Eva Drench, who was the former president of the Church of Scientology International, what I told him in bed, he was enforced by the cult to report to the cult. This is what I mean by a third person in a marriage. No privacy. You can't even tell your own spouse something that the cult doesn't demand to know. 
Carol Martiniano forced Kiva to go in a room and write out what I had said in bed privately. These did he, did, let me ask you a personal question. Did eventually, did you both kind of stop telling the public stuff? I mean, because maybe drama has happened and it's been difficult. Did you guys? No, this was at the tail end when he was being ordered to divorce me. Uh, oh, wow. He was being ordered to? Oh, yeah. He was, he, he, he was ordered by David Miscavige to divorce me. Yeah. Let's get back to. Wow. Okay. Okay. <laughs> he was ordered. Let me send you a list of how many marriages David Miscavige broke up by order. They're all listed on the web. Like okay. 180. I wasn't just, there's tons of people. So Tom Cruise uh, picked a girl, beautiful girl, who's a current actress. And vanity, this is already on the internet. So <laughs> I'm not breaching privacy or just public. Right. He picked this beautiful girl, I send you pictures. And they had a couple of months of world. Oh, she, she was, uh, she asked what would, Tom was asked by the cult, what would you like most on your first date with the Scientology choice? of your sexual partner. Mm -hmm. And he said, I'd like to go skating in the skating rink at Rockefeller Plaza. I'd like sushi. And yeah, I'd like to have an ice skating date with sushi, of course, laid on a platter by the coat. Ice skates were rented. Da, 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 da. She was flown to New York to do ice skating with Tom and eat sushi on the first date. Well, they had a two month whirlwind intense romance. And then she wasn't. <laughs> I can see where this is going. They were sitting at a table and she wasn't understanding Miss Kata. And he just dumped her. So they were intense sexual partners for two months and then he Tom Cruise discarded her and she was sent to flag the Clearwater facility. And she was made to clean toilets with a toothbrush. And she was made to work at night scrubbing floors. She was designated as a failure. She didn't please Tom Cruise enough. He had to discard her. And she almost had a mental breakdown. She went from Tom Cruise's girlfriend to an incarcerated slave cleaning toilets. It's, mm. it's, it's beyond belief. Yeah. She wasn't a sealed member. Anyway, she's risen higher and higher in acting roles. She's a Middle Eastern girl from Iran. I'll, I'll send you some. So when the story exploded on Vanity Fair, Tom Cruise truly, because he doesn't have a girlfriend now. <laughs> well, he may have some random dates. Yeah. He doesn't let the church, because it sort of was shameful that this whole story had embarrassment for all around. Right, right. Why would Tom Cruise look through church audition videos for, couldn't he find a girlfriend without using the cult as a dating service? I mean, this is like, this, this was completely pimping a girl. Right. What, what ecclesiastical how can this be? But as you've mentioned, it's a cult phenomenon to get mm -hmm. a second dynamic. Yeah, and a better way to control him than to have someone who fits in with what he thinks. That's wild. So now he doesn't let them interfere with his uh, his affairs, his relationship affairs in terms uh -huh. of like... He does okay. not. 
pages down. But there's endless tabloid stuff saying, Tom's leaving Scientology. So I don't know where they get this from because he seems to be mesmerized by David Miscavige. He gives out statements that David Miscavige is the most honorable, ethical, wonderful human being. And then I'm going to end this little, we said we keep these short. Tom Cruise made this incredible statement, which just, first of all, David Miscavige called him the most loyal Scientologist that ever is, that ever was. Here's a movie star who doesn't work 90 hour weeks in the cult. Right. He goes around doing his pleasure. Mm -hmm. But Miscavige named him the most loyal, best Scientologist in the world. This is what. And you know what Tom Cruise said? He said, <laughs> this is the finale. First, there is L. Ron Hubbard. Then there is David Miscavige. Then there is me. Oh, wow. So he is buying into, he's probably got a similar kind of ego um, to what David Miscavige has. They like to be the ringleaders. I think we should title this Scientology Tom Cruise and then there is me. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much, Karen. This has been really revealing. It just shows all of the signs of a cult when they want to fix your sex partners. They want to tell you who you can talk to, who you can associate yourself with. And nothing is deeper than getting to your sexual relationship partners. I mean, that's the lowest of the low you can go. So I get why they would be embarrassed. And, um, I hope more people see this and they go, you know what? I think I'll stay away from Scientology. I don't imagine he'll ever leave. Uh, he is that treated like a king, but you never know. It'd be cool to see it happen one day. Can I tell you just one little tidbit? Yeah. This was reported on, on, Marty, on different blogs and forums. David Miscavige liked to have a few of his inner circle buddies at night when he was, he likes to drink whiskey at night and they would chit chat and laugh and joke. And David Miscavige took out little tidbits of what Tom was confessing to about his very, very private sexual activity. Mm -hmm. And the senior execs of the Scientology cult would rumor monger and discuss it and laugh at Tom's sexual tidbits. Now, how do, like, if you don't mind me asking, you said that was on other blogs and stuff? Yes, it was in Marty Rathburn's. Marty Rathburn was second in command. He was oh, David wow. Miscavige's right hand man. So he was the one exposing he was the one all of this. Who, who, who reeled Tom back in the cult. And he reported that little juicy tidbits were taken out of Tom Cruise's folder. And Miscavige had a habit of doing that. Mm -hmm. There are numerous stories on how he took bits. So people think they're confessing privately with priest penitent privilege. Rubbish. There's no priest penitent privilege. <sighs> what you say in session not only can and will be used against you in a com ethics committee of evidence, but is gossiped with and chatted about by staff members routinely this happened for years for years jeez so well this so private what he thinks is his peculiar sexual needs and wants what he thought was private given up in a session has been laughed at and mocked by the very hero that he adores david miscavige and david miscavige's inner circle that's what i want the public to know Wow. Thank you so much, Karen. Everybody go down in the description, subscribe to her YouTube channel and let us know 
if you like this episode, what you thought was interesting about this episode, or any other ideas pertaining to Scientology that you would like to hear from from us. And once again, thank you to our guest, Karen De La Carriere. If you would like more on Tom Cruise, we can do our Scientology part two with other anecdotes of Tom, but request it in the comments. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much.